We also had uh, a large donation from the Kingston Community Credit Union uh, for what's called a cart wash, where the equipment actually is sanitized. In the Burr Wing, I don't know if any of you were familiar with Dr. Ronald Burr, who was the first uh, clinician and the director of the cancer program way back in the early 70s, and the Burr Wing was named after him. That wing has been totally renovated and has had three new floors added to it. And so on the uh, third floor of the Burr Wing is a new 40 station inpatient dialysis unit that's open to uh, views over the lake, as well as on the fourth floor of the Burr Wing is a new 45-bed uh, inpatient psychiatry unit for patients who require short-term crisis intervention. So if someone's having a crisis, they end up in a merge. Uh, they were the only inpatients at Hotel Dew. They are now, uh, have been repatriated to KGH on the fourth floor. And there too, there's, there's a nice, bright space. And when it opened last year, Dr. Malev, who's the head of psychiatry, said they might only have one problem. The facilities are so nice, the patients may not want to go home. And so, so that could be a challenge. But the, the, it, it's created an environment of hope, of caring, of respect, and of dignity for patients who, who require that level of intervention. And there is also a brand new eight patient child and adolescent unit that has been uh, funded by the Kinsman Club of Kingston, and it's being named in their honor as well. And they are admitting, you might be interested to know this, children as young as five with issues as it relates to their mental health. The important part of that is if they receive the proper care at those young ages, it might be as simple as one intervention will set them on the right path for the rest of their life. And will in that way then, of course, not only help improve their lives and their family's life and everyone around them, but also save, of course, on resources that can be so scarce in our, our healthcare system. And a, a lovely side story to that is we had donors who not only made a, a significant donation to the mental health unit, they walked through the main hallway and they were quite impressed with the fact that it's got cathedral ceilings and they have a love of art and went out to local art uh, local art galleries selected eight original pieces of art and have created a gallery for the patients and for the staff and for the families wow. of patients on Burr 4. It's lovely. There's, uh, we had, when we were selecting them, there was one patient who was so taken aback she couldn't speak to the donor who was there but wrote a simple note and it said, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't speak to you. But there was one painting by Heather Haynes that she painted when in Haiti. And it's a little girl, and she's like an angel, and there's a balloon. And she says, everyone, and on her little note said, every one of us should have such a little angel inside of us. And so what we're doing is we're collecting the stories of, of the patients and the families, of the impact that this level of respect for them is having. And, and it's, it's so helpful in those patients' journeys as they're fighting those battles that have, have been so difficult for them to fight in the past that haven't been recognized. And the last piece on this part of KGH, of course, is the Cancer Center. And we all know people who have been treated for cancer. When it was built in the 70s, it was built to accommodate 35,000 patient visits a year. We now see over 80,000 patient visits a year. And while that might seem like a sad story, it's actually a very good news story because not only are pa people living longer in general, which increases the risk that one will develop cancer, but people are living longer and being given a quality of life while they live with the disease. It's no longer what used to be, as many of us would know, a death sentence. Many people are, are being cured, are surviving, and living much longer. And it's a beautiful new facility. They say that the chemotherapy suite, which now overlooks Lake Ontario, 
is the gem of the entire cancer uh, redevelopment project. And so it's been a very, very complicated uh, project because they've had to do the construction while at the same time providing care. And they have the Cancer Centre is very proud to say they have not missed one patient day in four years through the construction. It is, it's very, very incredible. So at Providence Care, they're actually starting the planning for a brand new hospital that will be built adjacent to the current psychiatric hospital on King West. And the plan will be to build adjacent to the current hospital and eventually that one will be taken down. And so the patient from St. Mary's of the Lake, as well as the current psychiatric hospital, will move to the new Providence Care Hospital, which is scheduled to be completed by about 2015. And again, the, the local community share of that has already been raised. And so that's going to provide 270 inpatient beds, as well as a number of outpatient services that they're going to be consolidating on that site. And we'll have uh, palliative care services, uh, the long-term care that patients require. A story I heard was that the longest living resident at St. Mary's of the Lake was there for 40 years. So you can imagine that it must be far more a residential type of environment than a hospital type of environment. And the current St. Mary's doesn't facilitate, you know, new type of equipment, the, the motorized wheelchairs, the beds, the, all the type of equipment that's, that's being needed to care for patients. And so there's long, it's long overdue to have this, this new hospital built and very exciting times ahead. So this is just a schematic, this is just a sketch of, of a plan of what the new hospital would look like on the King West site. So you can see here, there's going to be um, a couple of sections, one for the mental health services and one for the St. Mary's of the Lake patients, the rehab and long-term care. And they're going to have it, of course, looking over Lake Ontario as well. So they'll have a view. And that, of course, might be subject to a little bit of change as they plan. And then you say, so we've done all that. Now what? Are you finished? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, the next phase, looking out into the future, and there's actually a plan from a number of years ago that takes it way out to 2050. And to say, well, what's going to happen next? And KGH still requires significant investment into the future, such as replacing operating rooms, because some of them were actually built in the 50s. And they're still being used. And if you went in there upright, rather than simply on a stretcher, when you're waiting for surgery and don't pay any attention to your surroundings, you would notice all the tile that's the same as it was then, and uh, badly in need of upgrading. Again, because now they're able to build in the equipment into each operating room where they can treat the patient while on the table, do necessary x-rays rather than moving the patient in and out, uh, and do everything that's required in one location, while at the same time they need larger space to assist the learners, because there, as you know as a teaching hospital lots of people are here to learn. And with that, of course, comes uh, there's a need for new labs as well, the laboratories, where they do the, uh, you know, they do all the pathologies as they, they do uh, testing on people to find out, well, you know, we've removed something, is this malignant or is it not, and doing blood work and that sort of thing for treatments. There is a need to replace the current obstetrics uh, and the neonatal intensive care unit, which we know has been uh, a need for a long, long time. Uh, babies are surviving at much younger ages. And, uh, and we also accept babies from a number of different areas. We are only one of six neonatal intensive care units in the province. So it's a, a very important place for those little people who need a, a healthy start to life. Must be incredible, how I put it. <coughs> Just doing this, just being part of this, incredible. Yeah, incredible. It is very heartwarming. 
And, and our, our goal is simply to share with people, to let them know what is going on, that, that there are important advancements taking place, Thank and, to, and to share that with you. There are plans to expand the emergency department, uh, as well as, of course, the IT, which is the, you know, the technology. Technology is growing so quickly that in order to keep up with it, we're constantly looking at, at upgrading and replacing. You know, we'd love to see things happen like it is on TV. Unfortunately, it takes a, a lot of time and a lot of investment to get to that place. And I'm not going to talk to you too much about technology because I'm lucky to be running this. <laughs> and so there are, are, are future plans to take out Etherington Hall. Pardon me, you say Etherington Hall, that's 1958? That was built in 1958. Yes, and, and the Douglas Wing of KGH, which was built in 1925, and the Dietary Wing, which was built in 1959. So there are plans to actually take those wings out and then what that will also facilitate, there were plans to create underground parking in those same areas, which would help alleviate some of those issues. At Hotel Dew, currently there's an expansion of the ophthalmology department that's been approved, and they're going ahead with that. Uh, they have a, a tremendous program, but if, if any of you have been to the Department of Ophthalmology, you know how crowded it can be. And so there are plans to add five new treatment lanes, and then in the, in the longer term, they're hoping to actually be able to do, and I, and I don't know if this, is, if this is public or not, but I know their wish list in the future is to actually be able to do uh, cataract surgery in a treatment room versus taking time in the operating rooms, which would then free up space there too. And they're hoping to moder modernize their operating rooms, which is where a lot of these new higher tech surgical procedures can be is to find a new home for Providence Manor, which is currently on the on the Ordnance Sydenham Street area. So there are plans to build a new manor and uh, that's just in the planning phases at this point. That sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Sounds great for people my age group because I know looking to the future we'll be looking for that sort of level of care. And so we say ongoing, there's a number of areas that, that we look at, and the important areas are, of course, research. There's over 160 researchers right here in Kingston. And some people not, may not realize how much actually takes place here. The National Cancer Institute is right here in Kingston. Uh, there's uh, the Center for Advanced Urolog Urological Research. There's the uh, Human Mobility Research Center. Uh, lots of uh, research going on in the areas of allergy and ophthalmology, cardiac, uh, pretty much across, across the entire hospital there's uh, research going on. Intensive care, there's research going on in, in, quite frankly, in how to treat the elderly. There's a lot of consideration being given to that right now in how do we deal with people as they reach you know, the, the end, the latter stages of their life. It's no longer being considered in terms of you know, prolonging life at all costs. What is the cost of that? And a lot of care and consideration and research is going into, into those areas, which is really important. Equipment, of course, I've talked a lot about that, is ongoing. And you might say, what goes into an intensive care room? So you build those new rooms, and you're putting new equipment into it. How much does that cost? And for those of you that might be looking at all the numbers, I took a calculator and added them all up. And this comes to just shy, for the equipment, $150,000 for the equipment. And we were fortunate during the campaign, this slide was actually developed for the credit union because they also provided us with a donation to cover the cost of the equipment for one of these rooms. So equipment is always necessary. We actually, uh, this, if I could, I know I'm a little bit longer. If I could share with you just one other story, which is I found to be really heartwarming. A couple came through and went on a tour of the cancer center. And when they were going on the tour of the cancer center, they were taken into one of the treatment rooms. And the manager showed them this particular, it's a treatment bed. And they said, well, we have 27 treatment rooms, but so far we've only been able to get I think four of these beds, and they're called a high-low bed. 
And what they were able to show them was you can just push, by, by pushing a pedal, the bed will come right down almost to the floor. So someone in a wheelchair can help, be helped to just simply slide over and move on to the bed. Whereas what they were doing up to that point, and in all the other treatment rooms, a person would necessarily have to get out of a wheelchair, climb onto a step stool, and somehow maneuver themselves onto this bed. As a result of that, this one couple who had a tour told us at the end of the tour that they were buying four more beds. So they were up to at least eight or ten beds. Since they've been using them since that purchase, the level of care has gone up so high, the patient's response to reductions in anxiety and how they're being treated and how they feel has improved so much that they've made it the standard of care. And so they are working towards getting all the beds replaced and I've just heard that there will be a, an event taking place this summer to purchase the rest of those beds. And those are the kind of heartwarming stories that we love to be able to share. And of course, education is a huge need. Because I used to work in the private sector. I was in banking for 23 years before joining the hospital. And I just presumed that everyone was able to take courses and have their employer pay for it. Not so. All the care, care teams in the hospitals maintain and upgrade and are expected to further their education. More importantly, they're very interested in furthering their education. But it comes at their own cost. And so there's always a need for ongoing resources for education. And there are more than 2,400 learners that walk through the doors of KGH every year. And I'm certainly thankful for that because that means that's a future of healthcare for us as well and that we will have people looking after us in our, our, our years ahead. And so that's the end of my formal presentation. <laughs> I do, well, I'm not sure exactly who he is. If I had him here, I'd have him play you a little tune. I'm sorry, I'm just, you look so good. <laughs> but we hope that people can continue to do what they do and live their lives with quality of life because the hospitals are there for, for them when we need them. And so I'd be happy to try and answer any questions. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd ha be happy to stay around and, and chat with you further if you like. So I hope you found that interesting and informative. Enormously informative. Yeah.